guys, welcome back. Tahir here from Inspired RC. Today we're going to have a little talk about droop screws. Why it's a good idea to install droop screws. And also I'm going to show you how to install droop screws on your Creighton 8S. So I have already installed droop screws on this car. And I don't know if you can tell, but the rears have droop screws already installed. And this wheel on, the, on here. Has already got the droop screws installed. I have removed them off, off this of this arm here just to show you the difference between having droop screws and not having droop screws and you can see how this arm is actually lower than the other. What's, what actually happens is when that arm is all the way as low as it can be the shock shaft is extended quite a long way now when something is extended to its, its maximum it does have a tendency to to be able to be bent um, under stress now I have seen videos on um, a few people that have bent the shock shafts and I think um, a good solution to have try to avoid bending your shock shaft is to add some droop screws lift lift this arm up allowing that shock shaft to go back in a bit further um, it just means it's not fully extended uh, when you're doing jumps and you might bend it and break it so let's get the lid off Okay, so I have got uh, a Traxxas X Max bumper already installed on this. Um, it doesn't really matter if you haven't got one of these on or not. It, the process of um, installing your droop screws is going to be the same. Uh, I'm only going to do for the purposes of this video to keep it short. I'm going to show you how to install droop screws on this arm here. Okay. So I'm just going to pop you down. Just get you in a nice place. Okay, that's good. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to remove the, the bumper off the front. So as I said, it doesn't matter if you've got an X-Max bumper on there. If you haven't, the process is the same. The X-Max bumper is actually attached to, to the uh, Creighton bumper at the bottom anyway, so the process will be the same. Just quickly show you. So I've got this little piece of plastic stuck in, in between the bumper and, and, the, and the body uh, just to absorb any kind of bumps or grazes or anything like that. Okay. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to remove the screws from here and here. Two more screws underneath will, will release the whole bumper mechanism and you'll be able to slide the whole thing straight off. So I'm going to quickly do that. It might be a good idea just to um, whip the car over on its back to get to get out these screws. So guys, this car is so big that I don't actually have a stand that can take the weight. So I just use a tin of paint. To raise it off the bench. So let's just turn the car around. So I said for the purposes of this video I've already removed these two screws to make it a bit quicker and then we're just going to remove these two screws here. 
So to, to remove the screws you're going to need, I think it's a 2.5mm hex wrench. Just take that off. Guys, top tip, put all your screws into a container so you don't lose them. So now the bumper should slide straight off like that. Pop it to a side. Um, what we have with, left with now is is the brace pin here. And you can see there's two pins sticking out. So pair of pliers, pair of long nose pliers. The arm that we want to work on is this one here. Uh, this is the one that doesn't have any screws installed on it so just grab it with the long nose pliers and just pull it out and it should just slide straight out like that once that slid out the arm will just fall out like that now your drive shaft will have a tendency to fall out as well because there's nothing keeping that in anymore so just be aware that that drive shaft needs to be put back in when when you do come to uh, reinstalled in this so I don't know if you can see the arms the um, Creighton arms themselves have a couple of holes pre-drilled just there and there now this is where your droop screws grow um, on the 6s version they already the car already comes with droop screws uh, fitted these are quite long screws and they, and they tend to just go straight through the hole and pop out the other side and literally what happens is i'll just quickly show you the screw itself pops out this hole here and it sits on the chassis just underneath here and that's what stops the arm from coming over too far and extending the shock shaft so what we're going to do today is we're going to put two screws into here. Now, you could use any screws you have. Um, the hole here are, I think, two millimeter holes. So you need to you need to really have a two millimeter, a uh, couple of two meter two millimeter screws. Now there's two holes there, so you're going to need to put two in each arm. So it's going to be two, four, six, eight screws in total. Now. I've had a quick rummage around and I found a couple of these. Now, I'll just clean that away. I'll just whip you down so you can well, in the way. Just see what I've got here. So these are the screws that I'm using. Now Traditionally, group screws tend to fit through the other underside here and they come out, they protrude out the bottom side here and that's what actually attaches, well, it stops, it rubs against the chassis itself there. Now, I was finding it difficult when I did install some longer screws to get in, get in a, some kind of um, Allen key or even a screwdriver in there to adjust the screws uh, once I put the arm back together again and what also was happening is the screws themselves if I can show you there they're flat at the on the bottom now what was happening is over time as as the arm Over time, as as the arm is going up and down, with the vibrations of just running it up and down, up and down, up and down like this, what was happening is the screws are eating into the chassis itself here, and over time it would start weakening that that part of the chassis. So you can see here, I've actually got some black tape, and I've just wrapped it around all these areas on all four corners 
just to give it some kind of protection so that chassis is slightly is protected from underneath where this where the screw is going to be rubbing against it constantly when you're driving now you can see here I've got two really small screws just pop you down again right, so I've got two really small screws and the idea that I had is I quite I'll grab it with my pliers now if you can see that these screws are an M2 screw and I think they're about eight millimeter long now you can have them a bit longer it doesn't really matter but you do need to use m3 screws now what i've done is they're round headed at the top i've actually installed these screws upside down this way upside down on the arm the reason why i've done that is i want the round head of this screw to be the place where it contacts the chassis and with it being round headed like that it shouldn't dig into the chassis and weaken that point where it's where it's hitting it so it should last a bit longer now first time i've done this i don't know how it will work if it does work or not um, but so far so good so we need to install these screws now it's very important that you get you level along the front the same so you want both the arms to be extended at the same at the same amount so um i think when i measured it i think i was just taking a measurement of how much the shock shaft is actually extending out once i've got these screws in and it's just a case of adjusting it adjusting it tightening them loosening them until you get the perfect size now the way I done it is I just measured the amount the shaft is 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 coming out when the car is the normal way around um, and then it just went off by eye basically uh, um, it should be all right so just gonna get you a bit closer now we go so straight in be careful you don't cross thread anything you just screw it nice and easy Also guys, you've got to make sure that the screw head isn't too big because these two screws are very close together and you don't want them catching each other when you're trying to screw it down. My second screw going in. That's it, it's probably unconventional the way I'm doing it. Um, I feel it might give it a little bit more protection than than putting it in the opposite way around. Um, so that's the case. It's, it's a case of trial and error. Just get the screws in. Uh, as you're doing all four corners, you'll have an idea of how far you've left the screws out on the opposite side, and you want to really match both sides. I think that's about right for me. So, as I said earlier, you've got to make sure that your drive shaft goes back in first and it's in there. Nothing worse than putting your arm all back together again than realising your drive shaft's not been put in or it's fallen out. You have to take everything apart and start again. So, as you can see, I didn't remove any shocks, towers or anything like that when I was doing this. I've left it all in situ. Another good tip, use something nice and thin like this to line up your holes first. To make sure everything's lined up before you try to put 
your pin back in. Guys, this is probably the the most frustrating part of installing your droop screws, getting your pin back in. There we go, we're in. Right, so my screws are installed and you can see with it being sat upside down, it doesn't look too far off. Um, the curve is pretty equal on both sides. So with the pin reinstalled this arm will stay in situ uh, so you don't need to put the the bumper back on quite yet until you know for sure that you've got your droop screws at the right um, measurement so i'm just going to whip this car around and get it on its little pedestal i'll just have a quick look Right. So it's um, not too far off. I mean, you can measure the distance. You can take some kind of measurement from somewhere. So you got five centimeters on there. And you got 5.2 centimeters on this side here. So 0.2, just take the screw back in, do the opposite what we just done just probably give it a quarter turn and then try it and see how you feel on it once you're happy with it put your bumper back on so it's completely the opposite way i was taking it off so you got one screw there one there and then two at the front here the two at the front here are screws that go straight into the metal so they tend to have a bit of loctite on there you can put some loctite back on there but I would be careful not to put too much on there. If there is too much, you're going to find it difficult to try and heat the screws to get them out to break the Loctite. So once you're happy, reinstall your bumper. So it's just a case of sliding it back on. Push it as far as it will go. Put your two screws back in there. Whip the car over. Get them two screws in there as well. So I'm just going to quickly do that and I'll get back to you in a sec. Okay guys, so that's the droop screws all installed now. I had to um, make a few adjustments uh, just to get, just get that arc right. Um, but now I'm happy with it. Bumper's back on again. So you've got your two screws at the bottom. And then you've got your two screws at the front here, and that's back on again. Um, so the process for the rear is exactly the same. The rear has a similar style bumper on the back. Remove the bumper, take the pins out, and then put your screws in. Make sure the drive shafts are in before you before you put your pins in. There's nothing worse than putting your drive shaft, putting your pins all in, hooking it all back up, and then realizing your drive shafts are still hanging out. You have to just strip the whole thing back again. And start again so guys i hope you found that useful um i hope you like it please subscribe please share and until the next time bye